Good morning, students. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the physical properties of matter and why it matters. I hope you learn a lot in the next few minutes. Here we go. Physical properties, does it matter? <laughs> well, in this presentation, you're going to find out. Now, physical properties also include what it looks like, what color it is, what its texture, what it might feel like, bumpy or smooth. It also can be what it smells like. That's a physical property too. But we're gonna be a little bit more specific as we talk about physical properties today. Are you ready? Here we go. The first one we're gonna talk about is magnetism. Matter, so anything that takes up space and has mass and contains iron or nickel will be attracted to a magnet. Now, not all metals are attracted to a magnet. You'll definitely have to make some observations to determine if it is if the object is magnetic or not or has a physical property of magnetism so this particular oh, shh i didn't know she was sleeping <laughs> this particular rock in the picture is actually a natural magnet it has the rock mineral magnetite which is found in igneous rock and it's a natural magnet that you can find here on planet earth Physical states are also physical properties. We're going to talk about three forms, liquid, solid, or gaseous state. Matter can change from one form to another by the process of melting, freezing, evaporation, and condensation. Temperature changes, they make that happen. They make the changes in states. Okay, so let's look at this particular picture. Who can find water in its solid form? Hmm. If you said the ice cubes, you are correct. What about water in its liquid state? If you said the water in the ice water, then you are correct. And can you find it in the gaseous form? Yes, gas is the steam. <laughs> All of those are water. It's just in a different physical state, which is a physical property of matter. Once there was a snowman. Yeah, snowmans can't stay around if they start to melt. So we're gonna look at melting point, which for a snowman would be greater than zero degrees Celsius. He would begin to melt. The boiling point is when temperature, which is a liquid, becomes a gas, and that's at 100 degrees Celsius. My niece is going to show us how a snowman goes from a solid to a liquid. And she's really cute, so you're gonna like this. There was a snowman, 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 went down on the snowman, tall, 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 and the sun he melted, 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 and the sun he melted, small, small, small. Mass is another physical property of matter. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Mass is measured with a balance. Now, mass is not the same as weight. Weight is how we determine mass here on Earth. Weight is a result of the pull of gravity on an object and is measured with a scale. So, how do you determine mass in a microgravity environment? Hmm, I got this flight suit on so I could tell you about my experience on board G-Force One, AKA the Vomit Comet. There was five teachers chosen to experience microgravity and I was lucky enough to be one of them. And so we went up in an airplane above the Gulf of Mex Mexico and we did parabolas, which are airplane rides like this, kind of like a roller coaster. When we were in free fall, it mimicked microgravity. And we experienced hypergravity as we climbed back up in altitude. It was awesome. One of the best experiences of my life. On board, we just didn't play. That would have been fun, but they didn't let us do that. We had to do science experiments. And one of those science exper experiments was how to determine mass. So this is what we did. We used a hacksaw blade, we used a film canister, and we mounted our hacksaw blade, put the film canister on the end, put the different weights inside the film canister. We pulled the hacksaw blade back, we released it, and it oscillated and we counted how many times it oscillated in a given amount of time. And we could determine the mass based on the number of times it oscillated. Hmm, so do you think a heavier mass 
would oscillate the blade faster or slower or a lighter amount of mass, would that make it go faster or slower? Hmm, let me know what you think in the comments below. Relative density, which means does it sink or does it float? How do we determine that? Weight doesn't determine if an object will sink or float. The volume of an object and how much stuff, matter is in the object will determine the density and the density is what determines if it will sink or float. The amount of mass a material has for a given volume. So when you see these big boats, you have to think of its density. Just because it's a big, huge, heavy <laughs> boat doesn't mean that it will necessarily sink. Like the one on the right. A physical property of matter is solubility in water. The ability of a substance to dissolve when added to water. A liquid, solid, or gas can be dissolved in water. Examples may include lemon juice in water, sugar in tea, or sugar in Kool-Aid, and the carbonation in a soda. Another physical property of matter is conduction. Some materials allow thermal or electrical energy to flow through them easily, like this lamp. These materials are called conductors, insulation. Some materials do not allow thermal energy or electrical energy to flow through them easily, and we call those insulators. So does it matter? Matter has properties that can be observed and measured. These properties determine how matter is classified, changed, or used. It does matter. Not to drop the mic or anything, but scientists got together and they organized the periodic table of elements based on their physical properties. I think that's pretty cool and definitely a great way to organize all of the ingredients that you can find here on our planet Earth. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot about the physical properties of matter, and I think that's a huge mic drop when you see that scientists have used the physical properties of matter to organize the periodic table of elements. Until next time.